Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. It has been quite a while since my last Fusion 360 tutorial. However, a few days ago, the blades to one of my box fans broke. When I tried searching for replacements online, I found one that cost $13 with $10 shipping. But this fan is pretty cheap and you can get it for around $20 at a Home Depot or a Walmart. However, I don't want to just throw it away, so today we will be using Fusion 360 to design new blades and 3D print it. The core of this fan should be pretty simple to design, as it's pretty much the same as the Ender 3 knob with the shaft that we designed in our first Fusion 360 tutorial video. However, the challenging part will probably be adding these blades around the core. So in order to complete this, we are going to learn some new skills. By the end of this video, you should be able to make something like this. Depending on how big your blade is, your 3D printer may not be large enough to print it. You may also need to separate them into different parts. For example, I can make the blade and the core into different bodies and export them as different STL files. I can print these 480mm fan blades using the Prusa MK3S Plus, which only has a 210 by 210 print volume. Okay. Let's start by learning some new skills. First, I want to make sure you still remember how to use the loft tool, as we learned how to use it back in the second tutorial to make the oven knob. The loft tool we used was to connect two surfaces. Let's draw a sketch here, a 60mm diameter circle, and click Finish Sketch. We will create another offset plane and draw another circle. Let's say the distance is also 60mm. I will draw another 100mm circle here. Click Finish Sketch, select Create Loft, click on these two surfaces, and the Loft tool will connect them to make a solid body. But since this Loft tool can only connect surfaces, what if we just have two lines without a surface? Let's start a new document to explain this. Create a new sketch on the bottom plane and draw a 50mm line here, and click Finish Sketch. Create another sketch on the vertical plane and just draw a 40mm line. Click Finish Sketch. When we try to use the Loft tool to connect these two lines, Fusion won't let us do it, because they are not surfaces. When we use the search menu to search for Loft, we actually saw two Loft tools. The first one with the blue icon is the one we just used to connect two circles, and it's located under the Solid Body workspace. The orange one is used to connect two or more lines and form a surface, which is located under the surface workspace. Of course, we can use the search tool to find it no matter what workspace we are currently at. When we select the surface loft tool this time, Fusion will connect these two lines and form a surface. And this will be the same as using the search toolbox to find the surface loft tool. As you can see, this surface is as thin as air. If you export this to an STL file and 3D print it, nothing is going to print. It is just a surface formed by two lines and has no thickness. When you use the I key to measure the thickness, it shows nothing. We need to create thickness on the surface. Select Create, Thicken, click on the surface. You can enter the thickness you want and select one side of symmetric. For example, I select symmetric and enter 2mm, and it will add a 2mm thickness on both sides to make it 4mm. Now, it has become a solid body. We can extrude like how we did to other solid bodies. This will be the first tool we use to make the blades. Let's close this file and talk about the second tool. Open a new file, create a sketch on the bottom plane, draw a circle, and let's say the diameter is 100mm. Then, draw a small circle at the top, let's say 15mm. If we want to make 12 small circles around this big circle like a clock, we can draw them one by one or copy them, and then enter the distance between each of them and set their relation to constrain the sketch. But, the easier way to do this is to use the circular pattern tool. Click on the small circle, select Create, and select Circular Pattern. The dialog is showing up. As we already selected the small circle as the object, we need to give it a center point to make the pattern. You can select the center of the circle or the circle itself, so Fusion will follow this as a path to make the pattern. Click on the circle and enter the number of copies you need. If I enter 6, it will copy another 5 times and make 6 circles. Enter 10 and it will change accordingly. Enter 12, and we will have 12 circles going around this big circle. 
Now we can extrude this pattern in different ways to make what we want. We will use this method to make the blades. Just make one and enter the number of blades we want. Okay, we have now learned all the skills we need. Let's start making a set of fan blades. Open a new file and let's draw a circle as the core of the fan blades, let's say 160 millimeters. Then add a construction line so we can know how long we should draw the blade. In my case, I will use 240 millimeters for the box fan. Use the X key to change it to the construction line. Next, use the fit point spline tool to draw a curved line. And this will be the shape of our blades. We only need three points to make a simple curved shape, and just drawing half of the blade is fine. Click on the green check button and you're done. In order to make it symmetric, we will use the mirror tool instead of drawing it manually. Use the keyboard S key to bring up the search menu, select the curve as the object, select the construction line as the mirror line, click OK, and the shape of the blade is complete. This shape is actually used to trim the blade, and I will show you that later. Next, I will draw the first line on the bottom sketch and form the surface with another line on a vertical sketch later. Let's draw a line and set it to 160 millimeters long. That's all we need in this sketch, so click Finish Sketch. Now, we will create another sketch on the vertical plane. Select this plane, use the Line tool, and draw a line starting roughly from here. Since the blade has an angle, we will set it to 150 degrees and the length to 80 millimeters. We can always come back to this sketch to change it to adjust the size of our blades. Use the M key to move it a little bit to the right, and then click Finish Sketch. Now, go to the Surface Workspace, select Create, Loft, and we will connect this 150 degree line on the vertical plane to the long one on our first sketch. When we move the angle and view from the bottom, it looks like a blade. Click OK. Since we want the blade to look like the shape on our sketch, go to the browser and show all the sketches. Click on the scissors to bring up the trim tool. Select the trim tool, which is the path we want to trim. Then, click on the part we want to trim away and click OK. Do the same to the other side. We can also trim it using the large circle. Do the same to select trim, and the tool would be the circle. This is the part we want to remove. As this surface has no thickness yet, we need to go to Create, select Thicken, select the blade. If we enter 0.75 mm thickness and select Symmetric Directions, it will add 1.5 mm thickness to the blade and also add a fillet on this corner, as I don't want it to be too sharp. Okay, we have one blade and it looks all right to me. As I want to make more than one blade, I will use the circular pattern to create the others. Select Create, Pattern, and Circular Pattern. This time we will select the body as the type. Click on the blade, click on the axis, and select the circle. You may make three blades or five blades or more, it's up to you. In my case, I will just try three. Then, the final part is to extrude the circle as the core. Enter the height that fits, and 30 seems okay. Extrude this as a new body, in case you need to export it into different STL files for 3D printing. As this is just a sample, you can adjust the shape, the length, the thickness, the angle, and even the number of blades you want. For me, I will also make some supports and a hole for the shaft on the motor. Since I will use a small 3D printer to print it, I will draw a few more lines on the sketch and extrude the blade and the core into two different STL files. Then, I'll print one core and five blades so I can attach and glue them together. Otherwise, I may need a printer with a 500 by 500 print volume to make this set of blades. If you've watched my previous tutorials, you should be able to do some customization for your own fan. By the way, if you want to apply different colors to the bodies, you can use the A key to show the appearance menu and drag the color you like to the body. After 13 hours, the print was complete, but it didn't fit that well. So I did some adjustments and reprinted it again and again. After the third modification, I applied some super glue and let it dry completely before putting it back in the fan. I spun the blade slowly to test it out, as making sure it doesn't scratch anything is very important. Close the cover of the fan before testing it. Start with the slowest speed, as it's dangerous if the blades break when the fan is running. 
if you're planning to do something similar, take your own risks and only do whatever you think is safe. After spending two days printing three different sets of blades, I'm finally happy with the fitting and the airflow of this one. It actually did not save me any money, but I did at least learn something, and I don't have to throw away this box fan after all. I hope you learned something from this video and you enjoyed it. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you should see something new. See you next week.